So we're in Mark's Gospel today, uh, chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. After the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices to go and anoint the body of Jesus. Very early on Sunday morning at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they said to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? It was a very large stone. Then they looked up and saw that the stone had already been rocked back. So they entered the tomb where they saw a young man sitting on the right, wearing a white robe, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who is crucified. He is not here. He has been raised. Look, here is the place where they put him. Now go and give this message to his disciples, including Peter. He is going to Galilee ahead of you. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and ran from the tomb, distressed and terrified. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. Quite startling this passage isn't it really? Remarkable. We'd be used to hearing this passage or the corresponding account from one of the other Gospels on Easter day. And maybe the, the danger of that is that we expect to hear, we expect to hear this don't we, almost like a seasonal story if you will. We expect to hear it, we hear it and, and that's that sort of thing. But reading it and reflecting on it out of season, as it were, uh, in October for this for this uh, reflection, it just struck me just how 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 remarkable it is. So we've got the women in the passage um, making their way to Jesus's tomb, where they seem to be fully expecting to find him, find his body. They're going to intend to anoint his body with spices. And they're very practically minded. They think, hmm, who's going to move that big stone? We, we won't be able to do it. So obviously the, their expectation is that they'll find the body of Jesus. But, you know, they won't be able to get in. Of course, Jesus had already told his disciples to expect that... Um, that he would rise in Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 31. Jesus began to teach his disciples, the Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the teachers of the law. He will be put to death, but three days later he will rise to life. And yet here we are, the women expecting to find the dead body. And it's, it's difficult, but it's interesting to try and put oneself in their situation. And how they must have felt when, when they arrived there, and the stone that they'd worried about, you know, the removal of, big heavy thing, had already been rolled away. And there was no body in the tomb. And there's a presence in the tomb, an angel fulfilling, you know, the, me the, the, the role as a messenger between heaven and earth and the, 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 this presence tells them what has happened so oh, it must have been quite something for them wasn't it these women so the startling remarkable nature of this really means we need to respond to it don't we one way or the other we might people might dismiss it or we need to respond to it as christians there's no sort of middle ground with it really is there i don't suppose so 
So this 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 event, the resurrection, was just so explosive. That's how the church came about. We don't memorialize Jesus, do we? As Christians, we don't remember him uh, as a, you know a great man who came and went. We don't commemorate him. We we have a relationship with him because because he's our living Lord. So our response isn't one a retrospective one or one of honoring somebody who's parted from us it's our response is to surrender to him <clears throat> as christians so this passage which out of season as i said as I, as I read it, familiar passage, of course, for some reason, <coughs> just there on the page, it's remarkable, earth-shattering nature, can really come home, can't it?